Um, what's up? Yeah, no, I, I, I saw the text. We didn't get it started yet. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll call you back later. Well, what's going on? Uh, just I, give me a minute. Welcome to Rebuild Rescue. So we're back here again today with the Cessna 401. In the last video we saw, we cleaned out the engine. We got all those bird droppings out. Well, as, as much of them as we could get out. Today, we have to check on a couple things. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but you need three major things before anything starts. You need air, you need fuel, and you need spark. I got so caught up in the excitement of this airplane, and I, honestly, I didn't check them. We kind of checked them, but not really checked them completely. So we're gonna do that today in hopes that we're gonna get this started. Let's get at it. One of these days, you're gonna run and we're gonna fly you. We're gonna go all over the place. You're gonna do some amazing things. This isn't the response I was looking for. You guys obviously have seen that you know, when you're working on one of these things, you just, you have to pre-soak everything because everything's corroded. Like literally as I'm working on these, I'll, I'll just see a bolt and I'll soak it down just in case I have to loosen it up at some point. You know, cause the last thing, uh, last thing I want is something to, to break or, or strip out. You know, crack open this, the turbo line. Get some more in there because we're definitely going to have to try to get this loosened up today as well. Kind of wondering if I take the air compressor and stick the nozzle right down inside there after having the penetrating fluid in there, if it wouldn't help force some of that down into the bearing. So I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's definitely pushing all of this penetrating fluid right down in through the bearings. You can hear it. You can hear it coming out the other side. So that's, that's a good sign, I think. I think it's a good sign. All right, we'll let that sit. All right, so we're gonna pop these caps off. And as far as I know, the point should be down under here and we can see what it looks like like we got it loose. All right. So, we got a flashlight. We'll take a take a look in there and see what these look like. Wow. So the points in there, they're actually really clean. Everything in there's really clean. In fact, I don't see I don't even see like one little bit of corrosion in there whatsoever, which is which is really surprising. So based on the inspection of this one, I mean, you only need one mag for it to fire. I could pull the other one apart, you know, to check it out. But I think if anything, what I'm going to do is we'll put this one back together. I'll pull the harness off of it here. We'll check the leads in there and make sure that they're not corroded. And from there, I think we're going to pull the leads, pop the plugs back out. We'll go ahead and switch the mag switch, uh, you know, make sure nothing's live on the engine. And uh, we'll see if we have spark. So we'll get this thing back together, get this mag back together. We'll pop the harness off, harness off. And from there, we're gonna check for spark. This is another one of our uh, wadded screwdrivers. So let's get this wire harness removed. We'll check all the connections down in the mag based on the way the points looked down inside here, I'm betting this thing is, it's gonna be pretty clean in here. Yeah, it looks, it's perfectly clean in there. Like it's astounding because these mags, they, they don't even have 
gaskets. You know, it's just, it's metal to metal. You know, in the 1960s, when this was built, the casting and the machining to be that exact that you don't even need a gasket. It's been sitting outside. It's, you know, it should be corroded. So yeah, it's not corroded. There's no reason why this thing shouldn't have sparks. So I'm not even gonna check the other mag. Well, not yet anyway. If we don't have spark in a couple plugs, I'll check it. At this point, I'm thinking it has to be a fuel issue. Not to mention, I mean, it's, I'm sure it doesn't have perfect compression. There could be a few stuck valves. All right, so we'll pull the plugs out. This mag's definitely clean enough. There should be no reason why it's not firing. You know, the other thing uh, we could check and see if, if the switch, uh, maybe the mag switch isn't working. Maybe it's uh, constantly grounded out or maybe there's a, a bad wire. We'll find out, we'll pop the plugs out on, on both sides. We'll pull all the leads off so it can't fire uh, and we'll turn over and we'll check for spark. Now we did leave these loose last time figuring that there's a pretty good chance that I would have to pull these off again I don't know what it is but the more and more I look at this engine the more I could see you know the engine out and dousing this thing down with some really good heavy cleaner and just cleaning everything up and and it just it looks when you look at it real close it, it is dirty it is like just full of, of of stains and stuff like that but i have a feeling like underneath all those stains i just have a feeling it's really clean i, I mean i wish i could see the log books um you know because i just don't think this has many hours on it i, I really don't because it just underneath all this dirt all this filth it looks like it's a solid engine get these other spark plug leads off. Then we're gonna see if she has spark. We got all the plugs out. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mags on. We're gonna just do it the old fashioned way. We'll kill the lights in here and we're gonna ground this off to the head. If it doesn't ground right, I'll, I'll get a lead and, and make sure it's grounded. And uh, we have all the plugs out, so it's gonna turn over real easy. We have all of the plug wires off of all the plugs, so there's no way it's gonna fire up, I don't think. So then we're gonna rotate it. I'm gonna need you guys to, to watch for spark. See if we have some spark. I'm gonna turn the mag switches on. All right, so, so we have the mag switches on. I'm gonna kill the lights in the hangar and come back here and we'll, we're gonna spin this over and see if we have spark. So what I'm gonna need you guys to do, just watch right here down at the, down at the plug, down at uh, plug two, and let's see if we get the spark. All right, so we got spark. So now we're gonna have to get in here. We get to see, um, and, and well, I don't even know if we have air, because. Obviously the turbocharger wasn't moving. There was a, um, there was, I don't even know how birds do this, but there was, a, there was a nest right up the exhaust pipe and right up against the rotor of the turbo. So 
you know, I, I, I didn't see it breathing very much, but I did get that out of there. This has been soaking, so that is gonna spin. We are gonna be getting air in here. So that's number two, and I know that it will suck some air through the veins, enough probably to start, maybe not enough to, you know, that, that it wouldn't choke it off uh, to, to raise your RPM at all, but definitely enough to start, you know, especially after getting that exhaust unclogged with the nest that was up in there. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to break this impeller loose, but, but next we're gonna see if we do have fuel, and I think I think that's where we're going to be having an issue. Um, I have a feeling that it may not be getting any fuel down into the injectors. So, so let's check that next. First thing I am going to do for safety's sake, though, is, is turn the mags off. You know, although it's not in any state where it's going to start, it's just always good for safe practices. So I'll go shut those off. I'll be right back. So I'm going to pull all of the lines into these injectors. We'll get some, some cups underneath them. Make sure we got fuel in the main tank. A little bit of fuel just in case there's still a leak or two. We'll turn the prime pumps on. See if we get any fuel down the line. And if we don't, you know, then we'll be able to trace it all the way back. Now, if we do have fuel down to these injectors, it could be that the injectors are clogged, which wouldn't surprise me at all. And we could pop them out and throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, get them cleaned up. So it actually has GAMI injectors. It's tagged with all the information from them on the engine, which is a, it's more of a balanced injector uh, for these mechanically injected engines. Yeah, definitely a nice add. Get some cups. <sighs> so we have six cups for all six injector lines. So now we just gotta make sure we got some fuel in the main tank. I'll make sure it's turned on to the main and we'll turn the primer on and see what kind of fuel we get in here. But then it looks like we got about a one inch of fuel in there. And in this aux tank over here in the wing, we probably have like 10 gallons. Now I'm not, one of you guys probably know a lot better than me how the tank system works, but I know one of these aux tanks will, uh, with a switch inside, as long as we're powered up, will transfer its fuel into the main tank. So we'll grab some batteries and we'll power it up and we'll see if we can't get some of the fuel into the mains. So it's interesting standing next to the 401 because I can smell the birds. I can, it smells like a chicken house. Like if any of you have ever smelled a chicken house, it really stinks. See, it started to corrode already and the water was just sitting in there because there's no gasket. There's no type of gasket or seal. Hope you don't see any smoke because uh, this is uh, a ton of juice. All right, so if you guys could, if you guys could watch right here and over there, see if we get any fuel pumping out of there. I'm going to turn the pump on. Some power. Let's turn this. Ox pump on. See what happens. I mean, there's our fuel flow. We have fuel flow. Okay. 
so it's getting pressure as far as the fuel flow, but I'm not getting I'm not getting any fuel pressure anywhere else. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. Tiny bit of fuel. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're getting a little bit of fuel. Yeah, so I thought it's the pump in that tank. Yeah, if we get gas in this thing, it'll fire up. I could always, you know, run like just a little line into it and put a pump and just start pumping it would start. I'd rather just start it for real, like yeah. have it all working, you know what I mean? Give us another, another try, see if it sounds any different. So we're not getting, we're not getting fuel out of the injector lines down in the injectors. I mean, it's dripping a little bit, but it's under pressure. So we should be getting like 20 PSI out of each of these lines and we're getting like zero, maybe even minus PSI, I don't know. So I'm gonna come back in the mechanical pump, back in the back of the engine. We're gonna pull the main feed line off and we'll see if we have pressure from there. And then we're just gonna trace it all the way forward. Hey brother, how are you? Good, My hands are a little wet here. Let me wipe them off. So you're the one that did those knots. Did you, did you see the video? Yeah. So those knots were a little bit, <laughs> that was some good knots. Like if I had somebody, if I had someone tie something down, you'd be the guy. <laughs> it even, uh, it even kept it from the rotor wash from blowing it away. So, this thing took a beating. but it even looks like there's a hole in the back of it. Yeah, I think one time we were working on a helicopter and somebody left the wrench up on the hood. And did it best it's always and nice. Slowing up. That's the rumor. Wow. Because yeah. there is like a pierced metal back there. Yeah. Something made yeah, impact with that. So this sat somewhere else before for, I think, since 05. From what? Yeah, it was over here tied down. Right, right down in front of Ramblers. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's just been a piece of, uh, piece of the airport longer than uh, <clears throat> I think most everything else has been here. Yeah, it's, they're, they're neat airplanes. The inside of it's like, oh my gosh, it's bad. Oh, I know. Have you, have you looked I at it? I closed the door a couple times. And finally, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it's yeah. Hard. A couple people, a couple other people stopped by and said the same thing. You know how many times I closed that window and taped it up? Yep. You know, and, and closed the door. And, you know, after a while, it's always, like. I mean, he always paid the authority. Yeah. Tied down over there, so. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting story, I mean. All right, so, so we're going to pull the main line off of here that supplies the mechanical fuel pump. We're gonna trace it and see where our fuel issue is because we're definitely not getting fuel. I could run something into the intake and just give it fuel that way to, to run it, but I'd really like to find out where the problem is and uh, have it run normally, so. So, a couple different choices here, so ways to do this. I can, Hit the pump quick and see how much it squirts out. <laughs> <laughs> I could maybe get a bucket. Maybe that's better. That's without any pressure. So I think I'm, I'm pretty sure we have fuel coming up to the uh, to the mechanical pump. So so it comes into the mechanical pump and then it runs out of the mechanical pump, comes over to the throttle body over here, and then from the throttle body, it uh, comes up into the diverter um, on top of the engine here. So we did take the main line off. I do have the soft line clamped with the vice grip just so it's not running out. It's literally just pouring out. So that tells me that you know we, we're getting fuel to the back of the mechanical pump. So these mechanical pumps are made to bypass if they stop working. So you can run on the boost pump, so you still have fuel, because if you're in the air and one of the pumps fails, last thing you want is, you know, having an engine shut down, right? So that's the way it's, it's, uh, it's designed. You know, I, I feel like we, we should be getting fuel. 
So I'm just going to continue to remove some of the lines and, and keep tracing it back. You know, when we do turn the, the, the prime pump on, it sounds like it's running. It sounds like it's making pressure where the, the flow valve or the flow, uh, the flow gauge is showing that we do have flow. We do have pressure up on the, uh, uh, in the airplane as well. So I'm going to get this hooked back up and we're just going to keep pulling apart, uh, you, know, you know, pulling the fittings and stuff off until we see where the, uh, you know, where the problem is. Because there's going to be a clog or there's going to be a diaphragm or something like that that's collapsed somewhere along the way uh, that's not letting fuel through. I think I might need to get a bigger set of wrenches. This is my thinking face. I think I'm actually going to try try something a little bit different. You know, we don't have anything hooked up. This thing physically cannot fire, but I'm going to run the mechanical pump and the the backup electrical pump or the prime pump at the same time. To do that, I got to spin the the engine over and just see if maybe something in that system, um, you know, is going to let some fuel pump. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this, uh, call this like a fuel manifold, um, possibly. I'm gonna pull the, the feed off to this. Pretty much have checked most everything else, so. Clamp this down. All right, so this is the feed that comes out of the mixture valve that goes into the distribution block manifold, um, you know, whatever this is actually called. But let's turn the, uh, turn the pump on and see if we have fuel right to here. If we do, it's a distribution valve, uh, something that we fix pretty quick. So we had fuel pressure um, with, right into this manifold. Um, I don't know if it how how good the the pressure was. I don't I don't have a pressure gauge with me to check that. Uh, it's something we can check later. But I'm going to go ahead um, and we're going to pop this nicely and beautifully safety wired. Whoever did the safety wire job, it's very good. I'm gonna pop this off. I think I'm gonna pull this apart, see how it looks. See what this looks like inside. All right, so this is the screen here that helps to keep dirt from getting down in the injectors. So it, it comes in here, runs up through this screen, and then through the top. I mean, there's some, there's definitely some dirt in here. It's like a tiny bit of, of rust, actually. Probably from 
this fitting because it's the only metal fitting unless it did make it past the gasculator. Of course you got to put some penetrating fluid down in there. All right, so we got this, this manifold um, cleaned out. Uh, there was some junk in it. We have all these lines cleaned out as well, and we have the screen cleaned out. So if we don't have fuel here, it's definitely not here. It's definitely not getting to the back of the uh, you know, mechanical pump. It could be, I mean, it, it could be that there, it's just not building pressure where I'd have to get uh, my, my actual injection pressure kit and hook it up and, and see if it's, if it's getting the right pressure. That would be the next step, as long as this doesn't work. So we cleaned all the cups out. There's no fuel in them. I know this is clean. I know we have some uh, fuel up to here. So let's get back inside the plane and we'll see if these cups fill up, see if we get some fuel, so we can get this thing fired up. All right, so we still don't have, we have barely any fuel in these cups. So somewhere, somewhere in here, it's just not, just not getting <clears throat> what we need. So I have no idea what this is in the back of here, but it looks pretty important. So I'm going to take it out. My question is, is there a screen? Oh, look at that. How did I know? So I figured uh, this was safety wired in. I had a feeling that this would be some type of a screen or something, and it is. Uh, man, it's pretty clear. It's not really clogged up. Unfortunately, there's, you know, when you pull stuff apart, yeah kind of want it to uh, want it to be clogged up so you can find the answer. Right, let me blow this thing out. Ooh. I guarantee there's a few of you right now that are maybe APs and you're almost screaming uh, into your phone or your computer about what I should be checking. So if you guys are, if there's something that's killing you and there's something like I should be checking right now or that I'm missing or not thinking about, you know, pause it and put something in the comments. All this stuff I'm learning. You know, some of the stuff I do know, some of the stuff I don't know. And all your comments and insight. I mean, I try to read uh, as much of it as I can. You know, anything helps, you know, so. So go ahead and comment away. Help me out. So this is obviously why it's not firing. The, the mags are good, plugs are good. I believe it has enough compression to, to fire, but without fuel, it's definitely not gonna fire. The other thing I was a little bit concerned about is we've been turning it over a bunch and uh, no oil came out of anywhere. So you know, this line's been off and, and as we've been turning it over for really the last two videos where we were turning the engine over, I believe it should build oil pressure so that, that does have me a little bit worried. You know, I would think that, uh, you know, as it's, and, and maybe not, maybe it needs a little bit more RPM until the, uh, you know, until the oil pump builds pressure. So, but I haven't seen anything come out, uh, come out of the turbo here, and I haven't seen anything on the gauges either. So. 
Hey, Sam, what's up? Yeah, no, I, I, I saw the text. So, yeah. No, we we didn't get it. We didn't get it started yet. I mean, we've been work. We've been. Wor I know twenty grand's uh, you know a good amount of money. Um, yeah, I. I don't know. Yeah. What? What? No. No, not at all. Uh. -uh. No, we've been we've been here all night. Yeah, I mean, we we were here. We've been, yeah. No, I I I just didn't. All right, I'll I'll will call you back later. Well, what's going on? Uh, just I, give me a minute. You good, dude? What, what's going on? Yeah. Um. So. So it looks like it looks like somebody uh, saw the video on YouTube and somehow, I guess through the tail number or something, searched the, uh, you know, the, the old owner or the owner, you, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and offered him 20 grand for it. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I just, I don't even, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about it right now. <clears throat> um, so, but, but here, here's the deal. The deal is, and, and I, you know, I, man, you, you know, like 20 grand, I, I want, I, you know, I, I want him to have that, that money, honestly. I mean, I know he could use it. I know he, he paid tons of money for this and he'd be tied down here for years. And I could kind of hear it in his voice that, you know, he, he could use, he could use the money, um, you know, but, you know, we had an agreement. We did have a, you know, did, we, we do have a contract and, we just got to get this started, but it's just so far away from getting started. There's just so many problems with it. You know, I just, I can't believe this guy, you know, he's, he's, tr he's total shady. He's trying to steal the airplane from us, you know? And yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm so invested. I mean, I know, I know all the viewers are invested in this thing and, and I just, it, we can't, we can't lose this thing. So we just, we got to get working on it. I don't care if it takes all night. I, I don't care. We're going to get this thing running. <laughs>